July 16, 1969, Apollo 11 blasted off from the Kennedy Space Center, carrying three astronauts on its perilous journey to the moon. Five days later, as the world watched with bated breath, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first men to walk on the moon. But not everyone is convinced that this historic journey actually happened. Over the past 40 years, numerous theories have called into question the photographic evidence that has captivated the world. And you hear about uh, the fact that the landing was actually done in a television studio. And it was the big black background with like, you know, fake stars and stuff. It's the flag being planted on the moon facing one way and the shadow of the man being the other way. I mean, I've heard that maybe the terrain that was seen on the video wasn't accurate, the walking wasn't accurate. There are no stars in some of the photographs, and that there should be because there was no atmosphere and that the stars would shine so brightly. Those photographs can be demonstrated not to have been taken on the lunar surface. Now, if they were not taken on the lunar surface, there's only one other place they could have been taken, and that's on Earth. On the surface, some of these claims seem reasonable, but do the scientific facts lend credence to these conspiracy theorists? So with our new technology in Maxwell, we have the ability to do something that's never been done before, which is global illumination re in real time. What that means is I can actually simulate the bouncing of light off of multiple surfaces and lighting other objects. With that technology, we look for what's the opportunity to show this off. And there's this very famous photograph of Buzz Aldrin as he was descending the ladder of the lunar module when they landed on the moon. We're modeling basically a real-time version of the Apollo 11 landing site in Unreal Engine 4. And there's been a lot of speculation over the years about the lighting of that and whether, you know, that the conspiracy theories of whether it was real. And so we thought it'd be cool to try to simulate the lighting of the, of the landing site from an accurate point of view. We want to take on the challenge of showing, no, the single light source of the sun was actually able to light Buzz Aldrin even though he's in the shadows. The task was a huge undertaking, and no detail was too small to overlook. It's actually reasonably difficult to get a physically accurate uh, version of the moon because it has a lot of different properties than, than the Earth. The environment of the moon and the surfaces of the moon have their own uh, peculiarities. So, for example, the moon has no atmosphere, so when you see the sun in the sky, you won't see a blue sky around it because there's no air uh, in order to scatter that illumination into the blue colors that you normally see. To make sure that this is actually accurate, we did a lot of research on the different properties of the lunar soil, the spacesuit material, the material on the lander, we looked at a lot of photos the lunar landing area, satellite imagery of that. We actually had to model the landing site. An astronaut that was realistic to the Apollo 11 spacesuits model a land that matched the materials and the different colored regions on it and the shape of the lander legs and ladder and all that kind of thing. This all plays into how the image is created. After the painstaking process of getting every detail modeled in 3D, the team then had to create a physically accurate lunar lighting model. We have a bunch of different modes that you can adjust in the demo, sort of as a progression through the technology. And the first mode is basically showing it how it would be if there was no indirect light or no bounce light at all. So basically no global illumination. And that mode kind of simulates what it would look like just by default in most game engines. And that's the source of where a lot of the conspiracy theories come from. Because when you look at that scene, Buzz Aldrin is completely in shadow because he's on the shadowed side of the lamp. The way that we normally think about light is that it comes from a light source, it hits a surface, and then it reflects toward a camera. But actually, light's more complicated than that because it doesn't just bounce straight to a camera, it also bounces and hits other parts of the scene. These interreflections make up a lot of the illumination content. The next step is basically adding additional point lights to simulate light bounced off of surfaces, and that just has to be placed by a human. And so if we enable that mode, you can see that it doesn't look very realistic at all. The next mode uses Maxwell's new rendering operations to render a more accurate view that actually does take into kind of spectral reflections, um, bounce light off the ground. But even after the light was modeled using NVIDIA's voxel-based global illumination, the image still did not look right. Part of the challenge was we've got to get the surface reflection of the moon dust, we've got to get the reflection off of the lunar module. We got all of that in place and properly modeled, we thought, but the image still didn't look quite right. There was some additional light source that was just missing. Turns out we found a clip of videotape that was shot from the other side of the ladder. And as he's coming down the ladder from the opposite side, there is a huge glowing bright white light. And as we analyzed that video a little more, we realized it's Neil Armstrong himself. The bright white space suit that he was wearing 
reflected all that sunlight off of him and back onto Buzz Aldrin. So essentially, Neil Armstrong himself was a light source in that scene. It makes sense when you look at you know the albedo value, which is the amount of light that's reflected into your eye basically from a surface. For the lunar soil is around like 12%, but the, the suits, because they're like a, a Teflon coated material, they're around 80 to 90%. And so they're very reflective. It's almost like a mirror, except you can't see something in the reflection. It just reflects the light. Once we pulled that information in and actually modeled an, a second astronaut and the light coming off of him, the bounce light was correct. And Buzz Aldrin looked lit properly as it did in that very famous photo taken in 1969. Another apparent anomaly in the photographic record is the lack of stars in the black sky. And some say they know why this obvious omission was made. Astronomers could have easily discerned that the, that the star positions were not those that would have appeared in a photograph taken from the moon. So it, it's another case where they could not fake it, so they simply ignored it. The thing to remember is that when they're on the moon, the, the sun's up there in the sky, and it's effectively daytime for them. Now, if you took a camera and set it up in your own backyard and set the camera settings so that it could get a good picture of everything that's in your backyard, and then kept those same settings, waited until the middle of the night, and tried to take a picture of the stars, you'd find out that you couldn't see anything. When you looked up at the sky, could you actually see the stars and the solar corona in spite of the glare? We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. There actually is a star field in the sky, and we have an adjustable exposure on our camera. So if we crank up that exposure to see the stars, you can see the bright light of the moon's surface starts to glow and glow and get blown out, and they take over the entire scene. Global illumination techniques have been used by CG artists for over a decade, but has only recently become possible to have this physically-based lighting in real-time graphics. For the longest time, global illumination has been used in film and uh, offline rendering to get the nice, subtle look of lighting bouncing off of multiple surfaces. Unfortunately, it's just been too hard to do in real-time. Uh, now with Maxwell, however, we have enough horsepower to do uh, global illumination in real time. So we can get that same kind of subtle lighting effect in games and all these real-time applications uh, because of the power of Maxwell. Maxwell makes this possible because in order to do the global illumination, we have to produce a voxelized version of the scene. And Maxwell is actually very efficient at, at doing multiplanar rendering, which is required to do this. Um, it also can push a whole lot of polygons because you know computing different levels of detail of the, of the voxelized data requires multiple paths over the scene. And so being able to atomically access memory much more efficiently, that allows you to compute this thing much faster than what was feasible before. When you compare the, the photo with the final rendering, they're actually strikingly similar, which I think lends credence to the fact that it's not a conspiracy. So the lunar landing demo is a very nice recreation, uh, not just of the 3D geometry of everything that was in the scene at this landing site, but a lot of attention to detail as to how the materials would have reflected illumination and where the light was coming from and simulating that light hitting these materials. And that combination of attention to detail uh, is why this thing can be regarded as a pretty good pass at what it would have really looked like up there on the moon. It's tough to prove a negative, right? Can I prove that they didn't shoot this thing on some Hollywood soundstage? Nope, I can't prove that. But what I can prove is that the lighting environment on the moon can indeed be modeled and run in real time on Maxwell, such that we can see that with that single light source of the sun and the bouncing of the light off the surface of the moon, we can see Buzz Aldrin while he's in shadow. So now in 2014, yes, I could go around and in, in real time, I could make a, a game of walking around on the moon and it would look as real as, uh, as it did in any of the photos that you saw uh, from the moon landing. I could do that in 2014 technology. In 1969 technology, no way. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard.